enga mana waka, enga mana whenua, ngāti paua, ngāi tai, ngāti whātua, tēnā koutou katoa. Koutou e noho mai nei ki ngā reke reke o te maunga rei e tū mai rā. Ki te awa o tāmaki e re re nei, tēnā koutou katoa. E tika ana me mihi ki te kai karakia, nau e tū whera tō tātou hui tēnā koe. O tira ki a koe mal me koe rangi, nau ano te karanga ki a nau mai, whakatau mai, ki tēnei huinga o te NZEI te Ruiroa Pacifica Fono ki te waipuna o rangi ātea. Koutou e hui huinga, tātou e pai nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. E mumu lawe me u mōna si i lewe inga ma le whaawhita i lea tua. I lana pule whaaswa i fuwa ma whae e ona tātou ao whia potu potu o le nei asu. Whaatū lo atu i le ma malu le atu nuu i tūputa ma li ma whae la unga. O pono oo o le atu nuu o ai lava wa po au ai mai lea so. Whaapa i atu fo i usu ma tua ngane pasifika uma lava a wae tasi lava tātou. Whaawhitai le au ofisa mo le tūsivala au lia, ele i aise manatu o le a amane i el nei tingata whaatau wha. A i talo sia i a i aise au ngā o le tautalanga au wālnuma na i manuia o tūpulanga whai ai. Ki o rana, mā aloa e le lei, nā maste, pola vinaka, whakalofa la i atu, Mā loa ni whakatā lo whātū. My knees are shaking. You'd think that someone who traversed the oceans like that could do this. But my job is in the background. And, um, yeah, but I'm inspired to be here for our children. Really appreciate your humour, brother. It's helping my nerves. <laughs> well, we're going to do a little bit of, um, every now and then I'm going to check in to see if you guys are listening. And I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I expect you to answer. Are you all right with that? Cool. Wow. This is a picture of Grandmaster Navigator P.S. Mo Pialog, who lived in the small island of Satawal in the Carolines. We affectionately refer to him as Papa Mo. He is the reason that we have been able to do what you just saw in that video clip. The video clip features Te Mana o Te Moana Voyage that left Tamaki in Auckland in 2011. They sailed up to Whakarawa, Marques is in French Polynesia, and onward to the Hawaiian Islands, across to San Francisco, down to LA, to San Diego, Mexico, Cocos Islands, the Galapagos, and then across to Tahiti, Huahine, Raiatea, Bora Bora, Atutaki, Rarotonga, Samoa, Fiji, Vanuatu, and then to the Solomon Islands for the Pacific Arts Festival. Then, they sailed, then we sailed down to Vanuatu, New Caledonia, and then back home to Aotearoa. I think it was in August 2012. Seven canoes with over a hundred Pacifica voyagers participating from 15 different island nations. A 18 month voyage across our ocean with four of Papa Mo's students, wayfinders, overseeing the voyage and teaching traditional navigation to a new generation of voyagers. We were voyaging to raise awareness as to the state of our ocean, our home. Our two wooden vat were built by Master Kava Matua Hekenuku Mai Nga Iwi Puipi, another one of Papa Mo's students. In August 2012, our two vat leave Tamaki, or Auckland, for Tupue, one of the Austral Islands in French Polynesia. We then sailed to Mangareva and then on to Rapa Nui, or Easter Island. Then we sailed to Tahiti Rarotonga and back to Aotearoa nine months later. Our sailmaster Jack Thatcher and Captain Stanley Conrad, again students of Papa Mo. In 2014, our Hawaiian cousins, the very first of Papa Mo's students, 
our tūkana or our elders, and masters of wayfinding, launched the Malama Honua voyage, a 37-month worldwide voyage on our mother va'a, Hokulea, visiting over 150 ports, 19 countries, to grow a global movement towards a sustainable world and teaching the art of wayfinding as they go. All because of one man. How many men? One, one man. Imagine what we could do. Who had the foresight and the courage. What did he have? Foresight and courage. Yeah, you're listening. I like this. <laughs> to do what he believed in and he believed needed to be done to ensure that the culture and the art of wayfinding would survive and thrive. You know how when our children are born, we, we observe them and we notice their different little traits. Well, Papa Mo's grandfather was the same way. He watched and he picked Papa Mo at a tender age of one to school him in the art of wayfinding. Mo literally learned at the feet of his grandfather by the time he was five, he was sailing with his grandfather, spending all his time at his grandfather's side. How much time did he spend with his grandfather? All his time. All his time. That's right. Observing through his grandfather's eyes, nature, and all of nature's subtleties. Learning nature's signs and nature's language. His senses were open to being informed by all that surrounds him learning all the arts of culture. How many? All. all of them. Everything you can imagine. How to build a va, how to build a fale. Being schooled in medicine, learning the chants of old from his grandfather, who had mastered the spiritual arts, the spiritual tools that are beyond Western comprehension. Being able to sit in stillness bearing witness to life and all of her moving parts. Papa Mo is being schooled in everything that concerns life. What did I say? Everything. Can you imagine that? In 1951, at the age of 19, Papa Mo was initiated in a four-day sacred post ceremony. How old was Papa Mo? He was 19 and he was like graduating with his PhD. And more than a PhD, because a PhD is specific, right? This is about everything. He had become the master navigator, a wayfinder. What does it mean to be a wayfinder? It means that Papa Mo now had the responsibility to use his knowledge to serve his people, his community. You know that song? To serve with love. You remember that movie? Oh, my voice isn't that good, you know. <laughs> Used to be good. <laughs> it is said that some people who learn the art of wayfinding steer away from the post ceremony because they're afraid of the responsibility. I look around the room and I see you, a group of people who at some point in your life decided that educating our nation's children is something that you really wanted to do. I imagine that it was your heart, well, I hope that it was your heart that inspired you because it certainly wasn't the salary. <laughs> and I congratulate you because you still do the work. So you went and got schooled in the Western model of education and have committed yourselves to the responsibility of shaping the hearts and minds of our children. I am curious as to how you as a specific person navigate that space. Where is your culture and what you have committed yourselves to? Or did you choose this profession for the fabulous holiday breaks? <laughs> because if you want to use wayfinding as a way forward, you have to know that at the core of wayfinding is culture. What's at the core of wayfinding? Culture. And guess what that's about? Culture involves the foundational values of alofa, fa'aloalo, and angamalu, lotu angamalu, or love, respect, and humility, at the center of which is light, light at the head and the heart. 
During the post ceremony, chants are recited and sacred medicines are rubbed on the forehead and heart of the new navigator so that light is a place from which he or she functions, never darkness. So what of this love and light in your daily practice? Or has it been educated out and relegated to the list of airy-fairy ideas that don't belong here in this space? Alofa or aroha is the foundation from which all things must come. Love for everything that concerns life. That means you and your entire environment. It is not an airy-fairy McCleary idea. It is a very real way of being. It is a place from which genuine respect for self and all that has life is born. It is a place from which genuine humility is born. If it was your responsibility to function in all things from the foundation of Aroha, I wonder how different your life and your practice would be. During the post ceremony, the new navigator is given a coconut to drink till it is finished. And this speaks of being full, not full of yourself but full of self-confidence, and having the perseverance to complete tasks, to respond appropriately to obstacles, of having courage to face adversity. The new navigator is given a sacred bracelet that has stinging coral in it and represents the power of the navigator's words. Imagine never ever again uttering another dark or negative word. Imagine being continuously conscious that what falls out of your mouth has the power to breathe life or death. The bracelet also houses hard coral, which conveys the toughness, both mental and physical toughness. The toughness that it takes to lead out in all conditions and go where no one has gone before. One of my favorite Papa Mo quotes is, don't pray for good weather, Pray for courage. Wayfinding in the first instance is about being the best that you can be. It's about being a good person. It's about being, and it's about selfless service to your community where the we replaces the I. And it's not just about voyaging safely from one point to another. After World War II, the Carolinian Islands and Marshall Islands became trust territories of the United States of America. Mo witnessed the impact of colonization and the influence it had on his people. In one generation, his people, his community, moved away from their traditions and culture that had sustained them. What did traditions and culture do? Yes. I like that. <laughs> It sustained them and their environment for hundreds of years. How many years? Hundreds. And how many generations did it take to change? One. One. Supply boats would deliver all that was needed, packaged, processed foods full of preservatives, and every other bling that the modern world had to offer became the new and preferred trend. This new way of living required money. What did it take? that dirty word. And the young people, instead of learning at the feet of their elders, were having to leave the island for education and employment. Papa, most people no longer needed to pay attention to nature to learn navigation to sail, to be able to provide turtles and fish to feed the people. They no longer needed to learn about the magic of medicinal plants and chants for healing. This new medicine was dazzlingly amazing. A little pill for every ailment. And the young people were no longer interested in the magic of their own traditions and culture. This is why Papa Mo chose to teach the Hawaiians navigation. It was one way that one man with the responsibility of Po could ensure that culture and the art of wayfinding was kept alive and would thrive. Our Hawaiian cousins at this time had ended up under the thumb of the United States of America. They had lost their land, language and culture. They were seen as second-class citizens on their own land. And in 1973, the Polynesian Voyaging Society was established. They wanted to prove that our ancestors did not drift accidentally and bump into islands. 
1975, they launched our mother va'a hokulea, a replica of an ancient voyaging canoe, and started sea trials, but they didn't have a navigator. When Mo was invited by the Hawaiians to navigate hokulea from Hawaii to Tahiti, a two and a half thousand nautical mile voyage, he did not hesitate. He knew the importance of va'a for the survival of culture. And when he was asked if he had ever sailed or been to Tahiti before, he said no. He had never been there. But he believed in the teachings of his grandfather and had the confidence of a Po, initiated navigator. When all the critics said it couldn't be done, Papa Mo did it. He successfully navigated Hokulea to Tahiti without any instruments. And this is the power of our teachings from our elders. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the invisible? When Papa Mo was asked, why are you a person from Micronesia teaching Polynesians navigation, his answer was, I take one stick. <laughs> imagine the other end is Micronesia. <laughs> and this end is on Polynesia. He says, I take one stick, I make one bridge. In his mind, one people. Another one of Papa Mo's lines is, white men draw the lines. Micronesia, Polynesia, Melanesia. What he was referring to is someone else's lines of classification to categorize us. The lines that helped them to make sense of us. In 1985, Hukulea, on her voyage of rediscovery, traced the ancient pathways of our ancestors. They sailed to Tahiti, Cook Islands, Aotearoa, Tonga, Samoa, Atutaki, Tahiti, Rangiora, and then back home to Hawaii. This voyage sparked the reawakening of our ancient ancestral highways and our genealogical, did I say that right? <laughs> genealogical connections. They proved that our ancestors, their vessels, really did sail purposefully throughout the Pacific all that time ago and that they were the best mariners that this planet has ever known. And Aotearoa Matu Hek was inspired and committed to building a double hull voyaging canoe. In 1991, Papa Mo and some of the Hawaiians came down to teach our people here how to lash, because you know the vessel is all tied together with rope, and help them in the creation of the Savaa Te Aurere. In 1992, Te Aurere was launched, and after sea trials, Papa Mo navigates her to Rarotonga. On board is Clay Bertelman, one of our Hawaiian brothers who traveled down to help out. You see, what is happening here is that our Pacifica voyaging family is growing. And whenever one branch of the family needs help, the others will be there. This is Whakawhanaungatanga, born from Alofa in practice. This principle is, is one that Papa Mo charged us to uphold. No matter what, we work it out and we work together. As one ainga, as what? One ainga. Thank you, family. One ainga. Our ancestors' voyaging pathways tell the story of our genealogical interconnectedness. So when I received the invitation to speak today, my first instinct was to send an email suggesting that my tuakana, an older brother, Hotoroa Barclay Kerr, who has been doing this for 30 years and knows a lot more than me, should be the one to speak. The response I got back is, we are looking for a Pacifica person to address our Pacifica whanau. At first, I did not understand the response because in my mind, the response draws a line between me and my brother and I and separates him and the rest of Aotearoa right out of the Pacific. That's in my mind. When we all know that Aotearoa is part and parcel of the Pacific. And then I realize that I've, had the for I've been fortunate in my life to have voyaged to our different island nations and to have sat at the feet of some of the elders, listening to the stories of our interconnectedness. In 2010, I was asked to help out on Te Matoa, Maui 
Ngāti Kaha Ngungu's Wakahaurua Voyaging Canoe. I was not certain if this voyage was the right thing to do, so I stopped by in at Mum and Dad's place for counsel and asked them if they knew about this va'a called Takitimu, which is the ancestral canoe of Ngāti Kaha Ngungu. And if you don't know, that's down in Napier. Well, that sparked an enlightening conversation. My parents started to relate to me the story of a va'a that started its build in Savai in Samoa, and then was taken unfinished to Upolu. They said it was called Oleva'a Faupo, or the vessel that was built at night. And that vessel had several names, the last of which was Takitimu. My parents said, go, go and help our people. One of the stops on that voyage was at the island called Reatea, which has a sacred marae called Taputapuatea. This used to be one of the gathering places of our ancestors in times past. An elder on the island asked where I live and I answered Aotearoa, but my bones come from Samoa. Then he told me that the canoe Tainui that travelled to Aotearoa, you know, that people, the Waikato and other places in Aotearoa, originated there, and that its captain was Hoturoa. Hoturoa's relative, a priest named Ngātore Irangi, recited a karakia, a sacred chant with his ancestor, that his ancestor Lata used before felling a tree. I shared with them that in Samoa we too had a Lata. Our stories of Lata were the same. One of the local women was present. She pointed out the island of Borobor and said its original name was Upolu. How did they get to Borobor from Upolu? I'm not sure. <laughs> And that north of Upolu, of Upolu or Bora Bora is the island of Tupai. They said that the islands were named by their Samoan ancestors. In 2012, we were voyaging on our wooden va'a Teodere and Ngaihi Raka Meitafati to Rapa Nui. It was on the island of Tupue that one of the elders showed us a map that had clearly marked out sections of land. Our rectangular, one rectangular section not too far from Taputapuatea, which was the marae there, on its eastern side and its southern side had two sections marked out. So there's this one rectangular piece, and then there's one to the east and one to the south. And, and those two pieces were named Samoa. And the one in the middle that these two pieces are attached to are named Māori. And when I saw this, I laughed, and I said, well, that's why I'm here, <laughs> sailing with my Māori whānau, you know, the Samoan and amongst the Māori. North of these sections were two huge ones. One was Rapa Nui, and the other was for Hawaii. Before we left Tupuwe, trees were planted by our, by our captain and navigator on these lands to mark our visit. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to plant our tree, Samo, but my teachers planted it for me. Today, we come together as a Pacifica family who have created a life for ourselves on this land, the land of our cousins. Towards the east of us, we are surrounded by our ocean, the highway that our genius ancestors traversed. We come together because we are duty-bound at heart. To ensure our children mean a lot to me, I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> to ensure that our children are given the best possible chance to be prepared for life in this ever-changing world. This is not their privilege, it is their right. It is their right to learn in their schools about their amazing wayfinding ancestors and their core values. It is their right to have a solid foundation of their stories, to hold them steady and true in the changing world. In your work moving forward, don't pray for good weather. Pray and claim courage to do right by our children. 
just in closing, I want to share a little poem that was written by um, one of our seafaring sisters. Her name is Fomuina Ferolini Maria Tafunai. <clears throat> our ancestors voyaged across an ocean, one third of the earth, one blue highway, one sea of islands, navigating mindful memories, apprenticed to the wind, the swells, and the heavens. And so we are born to this legacy, the house of the foaming ocean. Scientific brilliance transferred to each generation until wooden desks and blackboards replaced our canoes. But tomorrow the stars rise to new eyes and minds, seeking solutions in design, thinking models and wayfinding philosophy. A way to teach, a way that teaches first to envisage the island, trust that it is there, and leave your Thomas doubts behind. To know yourself, your knowledge, your skills in abundance and the lack. To know your crew, both, both the present, future, and to uplift and, and guide. To read the social, political, and economic weather, sense the environmental pulse. To know that you cannot control the wind, only which way your canoe is facing. To learn that life is a multiple tack, and that A to B exist in the English alphabet. And once you are provisioned, pull up the anchor and sail brave, sail true. Working together, we all believe the same, that earth and home, friendships and love are more certain compass points than north and south, east and west. Yemanwira tatu fontang.